The fact that a few feral packs of pups are showing us that a nuclear winter might not result in the fallout wasteland that we've all been promised is a weird science fact that boggles my mind. It's been about four decades now since Chernobyl made like MAGA seeing a Mexican and had a meltdown. It was the worst nuclear disaster in history. They evacuated an entire city in a matter of hours, never to be re-inhabited. It was a city that was made a ghost town overnight. People left dinner on the table, clothes left in dressers, beds left made. It is a chilling, eerie reminder reminder of just how dangerous human negligence can be. And while nuclear accidents are exceedingly rare, nuclear energy is one of the safest and cleanest forms of energy we have, especially today after learning from mistakes like Chernobyl and Three Mile Island. When accidents do happen, they can be devastating, and sadly, Chernobyl highlighted that a little too well. And I say that because the knee-jerk reaction after Chernobyl and Three Mile Island was to scale back nuclear energy around the world, and that has had incredibly devastating effects. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. After the Chernobyl catastrophe, radiation did some horrible things. All the plant life in the area died off within a matter of days, including forests for miles around. It created the infamous red forest where all of these pine trees were killed and turned into this reddish brown color before they withered away. And in the months and years to follow, wildlife suffered immensely as well. Water sources got polluted with heavy metals, aquatic life suffered, wildlife suffered from cancers and genetic mutations and reproductive issues. It was bad, and we knew that radiation could cause these types of things, which is why they evacuated everybody in the city of Chernobyl at lightning speed. Brave safety workers did their best to control the meltdown while also evacuating as many people as possible as quickly as possible so they suffered the least amount of radiation exposure possible. These people were true heroes. While all of the parts of this evacuation were tragic, people having to uproot their lives and leave everything that they'd ever owned behind, one of the most tragic parts about this evacuation is one of the things that they had to leave behind was their pets. But hey, in the famous words of Dr. Ian Malcolm, life finds a way. And that's true even in the face of radiation. And it seems to turn out that nuclear disasters are less harmful to the environment than people just existing within it. Because now Chernobyl is a place without people. Mostly, there's been continuous workers going in there because the power plant remained operational until 2000, which is just nuts to me that it remained an operational power plant generating electricity for people for like a decade and a half after the meltdown. But yeah, there's still workers frequently there because decommissioning and containment work requires a lot of, you know, work. Aside from a few workers, there is no people, and it took a few years to bounce back, but now wildlife has thrived. In fact, it's funny, a year or two ago, I did a science video on Chernobyl about this, and uh, I said the line that nature prefers cancer to Caucasians, because you know the radiation causes cancer. Shameless plug. Sorry, sorry, I will get to the point. So along with nature thriving in the absence of people, the dogs that people left behind are also thriving. Well, they're descendants, you know. And people really liked it, so I made a sticker, which you can anymore, still get from my sure the early ones didn't, didn't really thrive all that much. But they've had a few generations of feral pups over the decades, and these pups have formed into two groups of dogs, about 10 miles apart, that really don't interact with each other. And in recent years, people have been going in, trying to take care of these dogs, giving them some veterinary care, vaccines, and then they started taking blood to do some research on how these dogs have been affected and how they're surviving so well. And it turns out that these dogs have been evolving at insane rates. Now sure, we've got lots and lots of stories and lore and video games and movies about radiation giving us superpowers and things like the Hulk and, you know, all of the stuff in Fallout, like Meyer Lurks. But in reality, radiation just mostly gives you cancer. At least if you know you're a first generation radioactive. But you expose enough generations to enough radiation and apparently superpowers aren't out of the realm of possibility. Because these dogs have evolved traits that no other dogs in the world seem to have, and these traits allow them to be immune to radiation. But not only that, they also seem to be immune to heavy metals like lead and zinc, and some other forms of toxic pollution that exist in their environment. So it's not even that they're just surviving in spite of the radiation, they are thriving with the radiation. And this means that that worst case scenario nuclear apocalypse we all picture might not really be as bad as we make it out to be. I mean, it would be for us, uh, immediately experiencing it, sure, we we would not have a good time. And certainly lots of species of plants and animal would die out as a result. But the Chernobyl accident was less than 40 years ago and it has become one of the most thriving habitats on the planet. Life adapted to those conditions and quickly. Now to be clear, scientists cannot say for certain that these adaptations were caused by radiation exposure at all. These dogs have been exposed to all kinds of variables and radiation is just one factor and all of these variables could have affected how they've evolved. 
And before we look at Chernobyl and be like, yeah, I guess apparently it wouldn't be that bad to hit the big red reset button. You know, if given a Skynet solution, the planet would recover in a few decades. Chernobyl's a pretty isolated area and the radiation was contained pretty quickly. Like they put a big concrete dome over it. Now they put like another big metal dome over that. And radiation levels around Chernobyl have dropped to pretty safe levels. It's roughly the same as sitting on an airplane now. So in the case of a global radioactive catastrophe, the rebound may not be as quick. But nonetheless, the fact that nature has thrived around Chernobyl so well, and more specifically, the fact that two distinct groups of dogs that don't do really inner interbreeding have also evolved at a rapid pace in similar fashion, well, that certainly goes to show just how resilient and adaptive life can be, even in the face of what we fear is the most devastating types of catastrophes. But the fact that some canines genetic knack for the nuclear let us know that even a nuke would never nullify nature, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.